In a previous video, we looked at the first division of the brain, the cerebrum. In this video, we're going to look at the other three divisions, the diencephalon, the cerebellum, and the brain stem. So roughly speaking, here's the diencephalon. Here is the brain stem. And then over here is the cerebellum. So we've already looked at the cerebrum. In this video, we'll look at the diencephalon, the brain stem, and the cerebellum. The diencephalon has several components. We'll focus on three. We have the thalamus, the hypothalamus, and then the posterior pituitary gland. And then the brain stem is made up of the midbrain, which is right here, the pons, and the medulla oblongata. First, the diencephalon, highlighted in green. It's got main parts. Here are the thalamus. And then below the thalamus is the hypothalamus. But then it also has other structures like the posterior pituitary gland, um, the pineal gland, the mammillary bodies, and some few, a few other things. But we'll look at those three. Thalamus, hypothalamus, posterior pituitary gland. First, the thalamus. The thalamus sorts and directs sensory information arriving from other parts of the nervous system to the cerebral cortex. So it kind of functions as a relay center. So all the information, I believe all the sensory information other than your sense of smell um, is routed through the thalamus and then relayed to portions of the cerebrum. It's called a relay center. The hypothalamus, that's below the thalamus here. Um, the hypothalamus does a lot of things. It's involved with maintaining homeostasis, regulates a variety of visceral functions, and it links the endocrine system to the nervous system. We haven't talked about the end endocrine system directly, um, but it's the link between the two. So the hypothalamus, when I said it maintains homeostasis and serves a variety of visceral functions, I'm talking about stuff like regulating heart rate, body temperature, your salt balance or electrolyte balance, deals with hunger and body weight, digestion, and your sleep and wake cycles or circadian rhythms. And then it also, the hypothalamus, stimulates the anterior pituitary gland and the posterior pituitary gland. And then the pituitary gland will then release hormones, like for example, antidiuretic hormone is released from the posterior pituitary gland um, what that does is it sort of keeps you from peeing, so you retain water. The thalamus. Here it is from a different viewpoint. So in the previous picture, it looks sort of two-dimensional and flat. But remember, this is a sagittal section of the brain, so you have a thalamus um, on each side, if you will. So they, they are connected in the middle here, um, but these two green things are the thalami of the thalamus. Here's another view. It's just another picture, but we can see the thalamus fairly well. This spot actually here is where the two thalami are connected to one another, one in each um, hemisphere of the brain. The hypothalamus, the region underneath it, and the hypothalamus has axons here that project into the posterior pituitary gland. So here, pituitary gland is a little harder to spot because we're not looking at a cartoon, um, but it's this right here. Pituitary gland is also associated with um, human growth hormone, which we'll talk more about later. Here's a view, a sagittal view, or from the side. This is the thalamus right here. Here's the hypothalamus. And then we have axons projecting here through this um, shaft here, or this stalk. And then this is the pituitary gland right there. You can see it. And then next, we'll look at the brain stem. That's this portion here. And then we'll also look at the cerebellum. So here we go. The brain stem. The brain stem is made up of three parts. The midbrain is the part in green. The pons is the part in blue. And the medulla oblongata, that's the part in, in light red here. First, the midbrain. Among other things, it serves as a center for auditory and visual reflexes. For example, if maybe a car behind you honks its horn and you rapidly turn your head um, to see where the noise came from, some of that is processed in the midbrain. The pons 
also among other things, conducts impulses from the cerebrum to the cerebellum. So the cerebellum, we'll learn in just a moment, deals with coordinating muscular um, movement. And the cerebrum is sort of connected to the cerebellum through the pons. So information um, from the cerebral cortex travels through the pons to get to the cerebellum and help coordinate uh, musculoskeletal movements. Then the medulla oblongata, that's the most inferior portion of the, of the brainstem. And that's the center for many autonomic, remember autonomic means involuntary, functions like heart rate, breathing, blood pressure, coughing, sneezing, swallowing, vomiting, things like that. So things that we don't have control over like breathing. That's regulated by the medulla oblongata. So if we were to look at that again, um, we can see that this is the pons here. The midbrain isn't um, especially visible in this section, but, but that's like the midbrain here, pons, and then the medulla oblongata down here. And then once we get sort of inferior to that, then it becomes the spinal cord. Here is the thalamus also. This is a nice section. You can kind of see where the thalamus would be, one on each side. Remember from the other video, this is the corpus callosum that connects both halves of the brain. The cerebellum, that coordinates skeletal muscle activity, like we mentioned a little bit ago, specifically precise motor control. So if you were to reach out and touch something, um, you can do that if you have damage to your cerebellum, but the motion won't be smooth. So your cerebellum coordinates that motion so it becomes smooth and precise. So let's do an overview one more time. This is the thalamus. It's the hypothalamus. This is the pituitary gland. This is the brain stem here. The brain stem has three parts. This is the midbrain, the pons, and then down here is the medulla oblongata, and this is the cerebellum.